Let's uh, return to our old friend's quadratic equations, which you must admit we have looked at quite a bit, but um, we're now actually going to look at the fact that they can disguise themselves. And uh, so we'll give the title to this disguised quadratics, which is quite a commonly used term. Sometimes we call them hidden quadratics. Now, of course, if I write down this equation here, you instantly recognize it as a quadratic equation. And by now, you know all about them. But supposing this equation turned up, what would your first reaction be if you saw that? Well, you'd see this power of x as 4. And you might be saying, oh, I, haven't, I haven't done this topic. This, looks, this doesn't look like uh, anything we've covered in, in, in Core 1 so far. In fact, its proper name would be a quartic equation. x to the 4 means quartic. But the clue is in the title to the lesson. It's actually a disguised quadratic, because if I choose to write y equal to x squared, then x to the 4 is, of course, x squared squared, which means that that becomes y squared. This becomes 5y, and so in front of me, I have an ordinary quadratic, which I can solve in the usual way, giving me y equals 2 or y equals 3. Now, you must always be careful to finish off the question correctly. In fact, more mistakes are often made right at the last steps than this part, which uh, students usually get quite well. Now y is equal to x squared. So in fact, what we've really got here is either x squared equals 2 or x squared equals 3. So the solution of that <coughs> is either x equals, don't forget the plus or minus, the square root of 2, or x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. In other words, our quartic equation, which is really a disguised quadratic, turns up and produces four solutions. Okay, let's try a, another example then. x to the 4 minus 5x squared minus 6 equals 0. And we're going to use the same technique. We look at it, we say it's a quartic, but I can recognize here that it's quadratic in nature, so I'll put y equal to x squared as I did in the example above. And so this time my quadratic equation is y squared minus 5y minus 6 equals 0. This factorizes as y minus 6, y plus 1. So I get y equal to minus 1, or y equals 6. Now we have to be careful. And remember I said to you that the finishing off is the, the bit that produces the problems. y is x squared. So this says x squared equals minus 1. Now, of course, that's impossible under what you know so far. So, no answers come from that. The next bit, x squared is 6. That does produce answers. And so, finally, my quartic equation, this time, only has two, and we say it has two real solutions. 
the one that I've crossed out leads to uh, other sorts of situations. So there are only two real solutions, x equals plus or minus the square root of 6. OK, let's look at another example. t minus 4 times the square root of t, take away 21, equals 0. Now this time, it isn't so obvious that this is a quadratic. And you may be confronted with this in a variety of situations. <clears throat> you need to be on your toes to, to recognise what it is. If you're lucky, if it's a, a question on its own, which it might well be a sort of three or four mark question, um, you'll often be given a clue. And the clue for this one <clears throat> might be put x equal to the square root of t. Well, if x is the square root of t, then if I square that, x squared is, of course, equal to t. And so t becomes x squared. 4 times the square root of t is 4x. Take away 21 equals 0. And we have a quadratic equation. So there was a hidden quadratic here, but it wasn't so obvious to see. Let's factorise this one. Usually they'll give you ones that factorise, um, otherwise it just makes it all very complicated. x take 7, x add 3. So the values of x then are 7 and negative 3. Now if you look at uh, this here, just remember this time our original equation is in t, so it's t I'm trying to find, not x. This says that t is equal to x squared. So if x is 7, t is 7 squared, which is 49. And if x is negative 3, t is negative 3 squared, which is 9. So therefore, my two solutions are 49 and 9. Now, hidden amongst this working, there's just a little bit of a, an ambiguous situation because I have put x equal to the square root of t. And, of course, the square root sign is a positive number. But over here, I've got x, which is equal to the square root of t, as negative 3. So if instead of going to this uh, equation, I went to my first line, I end up here by saying that the square root of t equals negative 3, which is actually impossible. Does that mean then that this last solution, 9, is wrong? Well, let's see if it works. So if we put t equal to 9, then we get 9 minus 4 times the square root of 9 take away 21. And 9 take away 12 take away 21 is of course not equal to 0. So this solution here is not right, it is wrong. And the only value of t that works is 49. So again, it's the last bit that's really tricky. Don't just get to the quadratic solve it and just 
without thinking, put your answers back into the original substitution. And I'm afraid they will try and catch you out like this, um, and you have to be aware of, of what the problems are. So the only solution to my problem here is t equals 49, and if we just want to check that, 49 take away 4 times the square root of 49, which is 7, take away 21, and that's 0, isn't it? Because 49 take away 28 is 21, take away 21 is 0. So indeed, our only solution is t equals 49. So just be careful with this topic. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.